Okay, everybody, welcome back to an impromptu chill stream late night hangout session here on April 13, 2024. This is part two. And uh, let's see what people want to talk about. It looks like Big Tuna, 21 months as a member, asked the question, if World War III did start tonight, are you mad we didn't get GTA 6? What makes you think we still won't get GTA 6? You do realize that world wars have happened and the world continued, right? The world didn't end during the world war. Anyway, uh, Jared Jackson with a super chat tonight. Thank you so much, Jared. I don't mind if Ask the King ends. I do demand a return to poorly cooking with the king. So nostalgic, but good to evolve with the times nonetheless. He's joking, by the way. He used the emote of a crying, like, laugh. Uh, yeah, you know, here's the thing. Unlike many, many, many other content creators today, I've been around a long time. 16 years, man. And going. And still going. I know we're going to have a 20th anniversary, a 25th anniversary. We're getting there. I know it for a fact. So, when you've been around as long as I have, people are nostalgic. And I find it funny because, like, some of the stuff, Cooking with the King, poorly Cooking with the King literally was, like, 10 episodes. It wasn't a long-running series. It didn't even last a year. But there's still people to this day who keep bringing it up who, who think of it nostalgically because I guess they thought it was so funny, um, which was the point, by the way. Uh, and that's a good thing, I guess, right? So, that's cool. That's cool to know that people still have those kind of nostalgic feelings about the old content I used to do. Um, but, in, re in regards to, again, Ask the King, no, I don't think that there's any point to continuing, as we've already said in the first part. Thank you, Jared, for the super chat tonight. And thanks to everyone so far who supported the stream in any way. I appreciate that very, very much. Thanks for the two members, for the 21 bucks in super chats, and for the 18 bucks in tips and climbing. I'll be here for at least another hour. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Stanley Man says, at what point you realize this is how you don't play this might bring attention to your real channel. I discovered you through those, and you're the funniest person on this platform. Listen, the thing is, I mean, again, my attitude back then was poor. Uh, my attitude was, that's like you're stealing from me to do those kind of montages. Uh, my, my fear was always the following, which sadly is what has happened over time. Instead of people laughing with me, <clears throat> like if you're on my channel, and you're watching my playthrough on my channel, or you're on a live stream with me as I play a game, and something funny happens, like I fail, I die, a huge hilarious, you know, mistake, I rage, whatever. You're laughing with me. We're all doing it together. If you're watching my content on someone else's channel and you're giving them the view and you're giving them the ad revenue and you're contributing to their stream or their video revenue-wise, you're laughing at me. You're saying, ha ha, here's someone to deride, but by the way, they get nothing out of the fact that I'm watching their content, correct? Now, back then, when This Is How You Don't Play began, so we're talking over a decade ago, I was not an a, a interactive live streamer with different revenue streams. It was literally ad revenue. That was it. So if someone takes my video off my channel, makes a montage, and it puts it on their channel and gets a million views, those are views that should have gone to me. And I literally lose income of my business because someone took it without my permission and went and put it on their channel. You understand? That was my concern over a decade ago. Now, instead of being so concerned about that, I can look back in hindsight and say, I should have understood there was a demand for this kind of abridged montage style content. And maybe I should have gotten a few people who were interested, who were fans, who maybe wanted to put together montages for me to work on it and paid them to do it or something. And then have my own channel, DSP highlights or DSP abridged. And I would just do that kind of stuff then. And it would allow people to enjoy it there. And I would still get, uh, you know, some benefit from it. But instead, I raged. And I said, how dare you steal my content? This is not allowed. You should only be watching the raw playthroughs. And that, in a retrospect, in hindsight, I know that was the wrong way to go about it, right? The good news is, yeah, people have learned about me over the years and, and looked at things such as this is how you don't play. And I know that the reason that I still exist to this day, have an audience, is because of the fact that I have longevity, I don't give up, and despite all these people making content about me, I still persevere through it and continue on. Just ignore it, right? Yeah, I definitely get some attention from it. I hate to be honest, but probably about 99% of the people who watch the negative stuff about me will never check out my real content. They just believe I'm a jackass from watching the negative stuff. They would never give the time of day to me, honestly. They would never give me a fair shake to see how I really am or if the content actually is honest, genuine, or entertaining in any way. Instead, they'll just watch someone else profit and benefit off of it, right? Which is fucked up. It really is. Like, someone was saying the other day, have you ever thought about claiming 
the detractor videos because they use your content and they even though they have the right to use it via fair use they really don't have the right to advertise on it that retains your your right that's why people do content id claims on youtube to begin with so you know you're i mean you're right at the same time i don't there's no i don't know how i would use content id i'm not a big company who can register for it i don't have money and lawyers <laughs> to, to you know what i mean to team up on that I, i'm happy to get attention the problem is i know for a fact 99 percent of the content out there people do not believe oh this is just in jest now i'll go actually check out phil for real no, almost no one does that you know so it's like what they say don't fight fire with fire that's why i don't do that uh but you know hey if that's the case right if that's the case then people come watch I'm, i i i enjoy that you know Saying rogues is if it's fair use, then it's not your content anymore. Uh, wrong. Wrong. At least per YouTube guidelines. I don't know about the actual legality of it. I'm not a lawyer. Per YouTube, it doesn't matter if you use something via fair use or not. You're able to use it and not get copyright stricken, but the ad rights still go back to the, the owner. And they can content ID match your video, and there's nothing you can do about it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You can argue it. You can argue against it, but that's what they do. They, uh, they sadly just give it over to the person who claims content ID. I, I don't believe that's right. I really don't. I don't think that's right. But that's how YouTube treats it. Because YouTube, the way YouTube looks is, we don't want to get involved in anything. So if you get claimed, you get claimed. Tough shit. What a great system, huh? But that's why I said, that's why I don't want to fight fire with fire. I wouldn't even do that. You know, I'm not interested in it. Oh, all right. What do you guys want to talk about? Let's not talk about drama all night. I'm not too interested in that. I actually had a big segment about my detractors on yesterday's podcast. Not today's, but yesterday's. If you want to see a big discussion about that, we could go talk about that. But there, over there, I, I don't want to talk about it on today's show. Or tonight's show, I should say. Uh, Slayer says, is it okay if I talk and discuss this month's private react videos? I mean, we could generally discuss about what they were. I don't want to go into detail about it. I don't think people here particularly want to hear the ins and outs of K-pop countdown or you know, the music videos that a producer watched and I reacted to, I think if they want to see that, they'll go to your channel, Slayer. I don't think people want to hear just in-depth discussion about that tonight. This is not a K-pop channel. <laughs> Asiel says, what are your next projects? Well, on Tuesday, we have a new release of uh, Harold Her Halibut. It's a game on Game Pass that looks like Claymation. That's all I know about it. But I'm going to check it out and see if it's any good. Uh, if it's good, I will do a playthrough of it, okay? Um... In regards to after that, there's actually a game called Another Crab's Treasure. And essentially, from what I've heard, it is a FromSoft style Soulsborne game with crabs and crustaceans and, and like aquatic creatures. And that's another Game Pass game. So that's like two games I'm interested in checking out later on in the month while I'm still playing Elden Ring, while I'm still doing Hell Divers 2 multiplayer, while I'm still doing some Street Fighter, and while I finally will start my co op with Cat. So that's what I'm thinking, okay? <clears throat> Go, I don't even know what you're talking about. No, it's no one said Cat isn't feeling well. She's not feeling sick. What are you talking about? You're, you're making stuff up. I guess he wasn't here for the earlier for the stream. If I never had crazy malicious trolls, would I hang out with group, groups of fans in public? Like going to arcades, our conventions and stuff, but with fans. I would not go to arcades and conventions and stuff with fans because I don't have time to go to arcades and conventions and stuff with my wife. If I had enough time to do stuff, I'd be spending time with my wife first. That would be first and foremost. Now, if I were as popular as I used to be back in the day and making that level of money, which I'm not anymore, not even close, I used to probably make no exaggeration, probably double what I make now back in the day. Okay, let's make that clear. Um, But back then, because I was so popular and I wasn't doing a live streaming schedule, I was able to upload videos four or five days a week, and I could take a couple days off if I needed to to do other things. There were weeks where I went on to a convention, filmed the entire time I was at a convention, came home, and made tons of money on the convention, right? So back then, it was possible. Today, it's not possible. I don't have the flexibility to not stream six days a week. Um, I can't go to a convention, film, come home, upload, and make tons of money. The, the videos don't make money anymore. 
right? It's the streams. So I just don't have that flexibility anymore to do it, sadly. Um, so no, you know, if I had an opportunity, I would be spending time with my wife, not with the fans, just being honest. If I blew up in popularity and all of a sudden I was making tons of extra money a month and I could actually cut down on the amount that I was streaming and I could go to like PAX West or something and hang out with fans, then yeah, I'd love to do it. But you know, what's the reality of that happening? If anything, things have always been going on a downward trend and not an upward trend. I haven't seen any real spikes of growth or anything. And every time that it looks like things are turning around, for example, three years ago, things were actually going quite good on my Twitch channel. My Twitch channel was actually increasing in popularity and getting more subs and everything. And then I get kicked out of the Twitch partner program because of my trolls. So that's what I mean. Whenever I get an opportunity to get ahead, it seems to get taken away from me by trolls. So sadly, I just don't think it's possible. All right? Thank you to Caterade so much for the membership. I appreciate that. I received a dollar tip. I consider going on Stuttering John's YouTube podcast. I bet he would bring you on. I, I don't... What are you talking about? Stuttering John. Stuttering John is someone who used to work for the Howard Stern Show a hundred years ago until he basically got fired and then went off to do five million infamous things that never took off. <laughs> and I haven't heard about Stuttering John, no exaggeration, in about 20 years. Like, probably the last time I heard about Stuttering John is when, when Howard Stern went from terrestrial radio to satellite radio, and he would play the old shows that had Stuttering John on them. Like, literally, it's 20 years ago. So, no, I don't know why I would go on a Stuttering John podcast. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I really don't. <clears throat> I do not have a favorite Pokemon, but a Pokemon that I seem to find myself always getting in every single... Uh, every single Pokemon game is I get a Magikarp, and I end up using it enough to evolve it into the Gy Gyarados, Gyarados, however you say it. I always seem to get that rare... Pokemon because I like it for some reason. I don't know. I've always thought that it was a solid Pokemon. So. Slayer says, I want to clarify, comebacks in Korea mean a new music released by the artist and not coming back from a scandal or something bad. Any new music after a debut is considered a comeback. They realize that's, that doesn't, that's not what it means, right? No, a comeback literally means okay literally means that you went somewhere like you stopped doing something you moved away you went and now you're coming back you're returning to form it doesn't mean you simply released a new piece of content right that'd be like saying tomorrow i'm gonna i'm going to do a react to a june the king documentary so i haven't done that in about a year so this is my comeback no it's not <laughs> no, it's just not. That's wrong. That's incorrect use of the term. If that's what they call it in Korea, they literally are incorrectly using the term. It, it It's literally you come back, like return to something you have left. So that's kind of silly in my opinion. Because yes, I was watching this documentary um, about, you know, well, not a documentary. I was watching a, uh, a video that a, a producer was basically watching three music videos from a K-pop group, and, oh, this is their comeback. And I thought, that, yeah, apparently this group was involved in drama and stuff. Some kind of drama, like what they've been through. Because some, the, some of the lyrics in the song is like, oh, it doesn't matter what people are saying about us and stuff like that. I'm like, so they've definitely been through some shit. Something happened, right? So when they say, oh, this is their comeback, it makes me feel like, well, they're returning to making music. Perhaps they went on a hiatus. Perhaps this is a change of style for them. And so this is a way that they're returning to making music that's different, so it's a comeback attempt, right? That's what I was under the impression it was. If you're saying they were just popular the whole time and they just made a new album, that's not a comeback at all. In any way, shape, or form, they're misusing the term for sure. <clears throat> okay. Poop, we're, we're good. You can stop repeating yourself in the chat.
What is the men's most expensive controller I, I have to buy or had to buy? Like the most expensive one ever of all controllers I've ever owned? I believe, I would say, <clears throat> way back in the day, so we're talking early 2000s, the Moss Stick, M-A-S, Moss, it was pronounced. What it was, was a homemade arcade system. Stick, okay? So, you know, don't think about Japanese arcade machines at all. Do you, Have you ever seen an actual American-style arcade machine? How it has not the stubby joystick with a ball on top, but it's long style, like tall. And the buttons aren't rounded on top, but actually they cave in a bit. You ever seen those American style arcades? So back in the day, when people were attempting to start playing arcade games at home on consoles, they wanted to emulate the controls on an American arcade machine. And there was this guy who literally out of his garage would make homemade joysticks that would work with consoles such as PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, etc. Okay? Now, I forget what it stood... It was something arcade system. M maybe mobile arcade system or something like that. Or Moss Stick. Okay? <clears throat> he would literally buy the, kind, the same kind of wood fiberboard stuff that you would see an arcade cabinet made from. And he would cut it down into short sides. It would be like a giant rectangular box. All right? And you could put rubberized stuff on the bottom so it could hold in place on a hard surface. Or you could put, like, cloth on the bottom so you could put it on your lap. And it was six buttons, just like in the arcade, and the joystick. And he would, he depending on what consoles you wanted to have it work for, he would actually hot wire, like, like wire it for those consoles. He would purchase the controller boards from a real controller and wire the buttons to that controller board and he would actually have multiple cords coming out of the back that you could plug into different systems okay so uh yeah and and so this was very prominent around the time say the late 90s and early 2000s until the japanese style of joystick started to take over a few years later okay the moss stick was exclusively the most ordered stick in the fighting game community because everyone wanted to emulate playing the arcade at home or in a tournament, okay? The problem was, think about this. You're ordering these giant pieces of wood. You actually have to order the controllers to rip them apart and put the boards in. There's labor involved to fuse and hotwire these joystick, you know, cords. A Moss stick, I think the cheapest one you could get was around $300. And then if you wanted the deluxe edition that had more features or... Uh, you know, it had more control. Like, let's say you wanted it to work on PS1, PS2, Dreamcast, and something else, you know? It would end up being like four or $500 because it would need all that work done to it. Um, And I owned a Moss stick. I bought one at one point. The thing was, unlike today, now you order a stick, it's pre-made, it gets shipped to you in a few days. These were custom made. So when you ordered a Moss stick, you had to wait for it to be made, sometimes months. Um, And so... They were very expensive, and there was a big wait lead time before you would get them. So, yeah, so that's definitely the most expensive joystick I ever had. I think I got just the base one that worked just with Dreamcast, and that one was about $300. So, pretty close. This one was what? Um, This Conva stick was two-something, I want to say, right? 200-something dollars, I believe. The Conva Obsidian 2. And it's pretty good. Uh, But, sadly... Uh, yeah, not as expensive as the one back then. And the other thing about that is back then, when you realize money was worth a lot more back then, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, so you're paying $300 in, like, the early 2000s. That's, like, probably, like, five dollars $600 today, right? Like, you're probably a huge inflation. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. So, anyway, yeah, that's the most expensive joystick I've ever had. Uh, let's see. I received a dollar tip from Kirk. Any interest in the show Shogun? Uh, I, I, again, I can't watch Shogun. I don't have TV. So, no, I'm no interest in a show I can't watch. No. Zero. Yikes. <clears throat> what is your favorite Nintendo game playthrough I've ever done? Uh, it's a tough question. You know, some, some games are recent memory that I really like from Nintendo, like Super Mario Odyssey, I absolutely loved. 
my game of the year for 2017, and then we haven't seen a modern Mario game since. They didn't make one, right? I mean, they did make a new Super Mario Wonder 2D game, but they haven't made a modern 3D game uh, for whatever reason. I don't know if they're waiting for the next Nintendo console. Likely they are, I guess. Um, you know, if you're talking of all time, and you're saying playthrough, you're not saying my favorite Nintendo game of all time. You're saying my favorite Nintendo playthrough of all time. That's a tricky question. You know, like, like, what's a Nintendo playthrough? Well, Final Fantasy VI is one of my favorite games of all time, and it happens to be on Super Nintendo. Is that a Nintendo playthrough? I don't really know what, you're, what the qualifiers are uh, for this. <clears throat> so, I can't answer the question. Would I consider going back to Twitch? No. I've already explained five zillion fucking times why I'm not going back to Twitch. If someone treats you insanely not, uh, unfairly, insanely badly, why in the holy hell would you return to them? You'd have to be a complete and utter jackass, right? When Twitch terminated my partnership and I asked why, they said, uh, hateful speech or something like that. And I said, provide evidence of what you're talking about so I know in the future not to do it. And also, this is evidence that I actually did it. And they refused. They said, we don't have to provide evidence. Well, then I don't have to use your business. If you're going to, to tell me I'm doing something, but provide absolutely no evidence to back up anything you're saying, you are an unprofessional bunch of assholes who don't deserve my fucking time or to make money off of my content, so I'm never using your site ever again. The only reason I would ever go back to Twitch is if I need a backup temporarily because something happens on YouTube and I need somewhere else to stream for a bit before I find a new permanent home, which would never be Twitch. I would never go back to them unless, again, they kick out their management and they completely redesign the way their business works. I am not going to be treated completely unfairly like a, like I'm just like I'm just a scumbag just push me aside what did I do wrong well we're not going to tell you well yes actually you should tell me so that I can improve and I can make sure that I'm in line with your your terms of service tell me what's wrong well we don't we're not going to tell you well then fuck you I have nothing to do with you you're a bunch of pieces of shit and you can kiss my fucking ass how about that uh I received a ten dollar tip Oh, let's see here. John Lambo says, would you and Kat go to Japan for a honeymoon? Would you vlog it? Uh, if J Kat and I were ever to go to Japan, I don't think we would call it a honeymoon at this point. We've been married for five years. I don't think it would be a honeymoon. All right? Uh, would we vlog it? Well, if we did, we wouldn't be telling anyone what we're doing or where we're going. We would just do it and then maybe upload some videos when we got home. It probably wouldn't be anything I would do while I'm there. I would want to be focused on spending time with my wife. I'll be honest. Like, I think that that's a humongous mistake that I made early on in my YouTube days is that I just vlogged everything. So here I am. I'm going to conventions. I'm going on trips. I'm going on vacations. And I'm just, the camera's never off. Why? Why can't I have some actual meaningful private time? And then if I feel like every once in a while making a video and for a few minutes or a minute or share an opinion on something I did, great. But why am I so concerned with making every piece of my life a video, right? And I think I did way too much of that when I was young. I really feel that way. I mean, just for, you know, posterity purposes, for remembrance purposes, I think if I went on a, on a vacation to Japan, I would want to take pictures and do some recordings for my own personal use and maybe, yeah, a few public use so that people can actually see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, like that's that's my opinion is uh, if I were to do it, it would be more for me than than, than caring about making content for the internet. I, I'm, I'm well past that at this point. Like I said, I enjoy having a separation between my personal life and my public life. I don't want to have too much of a crossover between those two. I enjoy having that separation because it allows us to be, you know, have privacy and have insulation from the nonsensical drama of the internet, which is what a lot of people don't do. They just mix everything constantly and try to get attention for themselves. I think that's really fucking stupid. Um, so, no, it would not be constant vlogging. Would there be some vlogs? Maybe. Probably saved until I got home, and then I would talk about the experience and maybe upload some of those vlogs to share with all of you. But no, it wouldn't be like constant vlogging and shit like that. No. <clears throat> oh, 
Uh, Slayer says, if you think of traveling, you can do a similar style of content like Dancing Bacon. You focus on the subject matter and not reveal the location and upload them afterwards. Yeah, well, of course. If I was to go anywhere, I would not tell anyone where we're going, you know, at all. I'd say, listen, we're just, we're going away for a while. We'll be back. And when we come back, then I can say, hey, so here's where we were. Here's what we were up to. Here's some videos of it to share and watch. And we, we will do a impromptu stream where I'll answer questions about the trip and stuff like that. You know, but that's what it would be. I definitely wouldn't be giving you any tips or, or, or any ideas of where we're going. <clears throat> Are the goals still active? Uh, why would you? There's, there's a goal there. There's only one goal. <laughs> There's only one goal, yeah. It's active. All right, Derek, you don't have to tell me when you're going to be late to a stream. You could just be late. I hope you enjoy the movie you're going to, but you don't have to notify me ahead of time. I, you know, people just drop in, drop out. There's not a reservation required to be here, nor are you required to be here on any particular time, just so you know. <clears throat> the blimp says, don't be hard on yourself. Uh... From how you were previously, it's a hard balancing act making content around your life that becomes the way you fund your life. It's understandable why you did it. Yeah, but at the same time, here's the thing. Now, having the separation between my private and public life has worked so well. You don't understand. This is why Pat and I really enjoy our life together because we don't have the constant drama and nonsense. All these idiots who are on the internet think that what they're doing affects us. They have no fucking clue that we have a nice, beautiful life behind the scenes completely untouched by any of their nonsense. And that's what we really enjoy. The moment that you share yourself on the internet, anything you share becomes ammo for morons, right? And that's the thing is, back then, everything was shared. And I really do feel like that was too much. I think I would have basically enjoyed my life more in that period of my time if I had kept things to myself. But you're right. I mean, every piece of content I put out was profit. And I think that's what it was. It got to the point where it's an addiction almost. Everything I make can be monetized and could be made into a profitable system. So why not just record everything I do and upload it to the internet? And that's sad, honestly. I Now I know that. But back then, I didn't get that. The whole thing was, again, YouTube was brand new. And it was different. And it was unique. And it was there was no blueprint or outline or example to follow of how to do it. So I was just winging it. And I made lots of mistakes. And that's definitely one of the mistakes I felt I made is I recorded too much. I shared too much. <clears throat> And it resulted in quite a lot of, uh, you know, bad stuff uh, over the years. So, all right. So we're continuing on. We still got some good time here for people to hang out and ask questions or whatever they want to do. Uh, would I ever go back to Minecraft again? I I've answered this the same way over the years. I'm not opposed to it, but at the same time, there's never really a demand for it. Every once in a while, someone says, man, I really loved that year that you played Minecraft. Would you go back? It's kind of like a reminiscing thing almost. Um... But, you know, it is what it is. It worked for that time period. I feel like today, if we were to do chill streaming, we would want to do something new rather than something we've already done kind of to death in the past. Honestly, I don't really feel like going and building stuff. I'd like to do other experiences in gaming. So, you know. Uh, do I feel anxiety about people wanting to know absolutely everything about me? It's tough managing parasocial relationships. Here's the thing. My fans don't want to know everything about me. It's obsessed weirdos on the internet who want to hurt me that want to know everything about me, right? So no, I don't stress about them because those people don't matter to me and I pay no attention to them anymore. I just don't give a shit. Every once in a while, it intersects with my content and I have to bring it up or address something just to clarify for my personal audience. But no, I don't care about what those obsessive people think. They're losers and I have nothing to do with them. So... <clears throat> Okay. Would I consider playing Valheim? I have no idea what that is. Would I go to Kick as a backup? Again, from my understanding, Kick has no moderation. If Kick has no moderation, then I can't stream on Kick because it would just be a complete cesspool of trolling, right? So no, I would never stream on Kick. Um, unless there is moderation and those things do exist, that, and I was told they don't, they're not, you know, and I'm misinformed, but that's what I was told. So. Have I come across a fan in real life recently? No, not recently. Derek, have a good night. Yes, we already... Derek, we already said good night. 
All right, it's okay. You can chill out. I'll see you when you come by tomorrow. Okay? Thanks. Sheesh. You can only moderate your own stream. So basically, it would always be me moderating the stream by myself is what you're saying. You can't have moderators help you. Wow. That would be rough. Now, like, listen, every once in a while I can do that, but especially if I'm into something, like I'm playing a game or whatever, I can't be moderating the stream full time. That would be insanely difficult. No, you can definitely have mods, so then what are you people talking about? Mark says, going to Japan for 12 days, then Singapore for two days cost me $5,700. That's nearly $4,000 US dollars. It ain't cheap. I did spend a lot of money there. That sounds, che that sounds cheap. I'm not even kidding you. Like, that sounds cheap. 12 days in Japan and two days in Singapore, and you only spent, like, $4,000, and that's everything? That's including airfare, hotel, food, and everything you spent money on there? That sounds cheap. Seriously. <laughs> I down to play GBA, GBA games like Golden Sun. I don't know how I would play them. I've played Golden Sun games on GBA, and they were very good. Like I said, I felt like... Um, I definitely felt like the uh, the game that I was playing, um, Sea of Stars, was inspired in many ways with its puzzle aspects by Golden Sun. <clears throat> Pimpin' Pat did a super chat. He says, kick pays double what YouTube does. You're crazy not to. And how exactly do they pay? You do realize that their business model is not sustainable and it's backed by a few investors and it's going to run out, right? It's not a sustainable business model unless they keep finding more and more investors, unlike YouTube, which is not going to go away. YouTube, all right, when you say, oh, they don't pay as much as YouTube, what are you talking about? Ad revenue? Are you talking about paid subscriptions? Are you talking about super chats? Are you talking about tips? I tell you right now, if I went to kick right now, I'd make less than I make on YouTube. I don't know what you're talking about. It, it seems like people have this weird misconception of like, like, like Kick is some magical place full of money. It's like Kick is an experiment by a bunch of rich people, right, to try something different with streaming, and it's resulted in a bunch of people just doing streams over there, right, in a in a less controlled environment almost. Um, and I haven't heard anything to any justification of going over there besides short-term profits. There are short-term profits to be gained over there. Run over there. Okay. Doesn't make sense to me. <clears throat> like I said, for someone like me, who's a small-time guy, I don't have, you know, a thousand people here on YouTube, and then if I streamed on Kick, I'm not going to get another thousand viewers on, tw on Kick. All I'm going to do is split my audience. I don't want to do that. My audience is small enough. You know, I like I like having the audience I have. I don't want to lose people now because I've become a quick kick streamer or whatever. I don't know what this tactical soap is. I've heard a couple people mention that, but I don't know anything about it. Nintendo Switch Online has a solid selection of Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games we're looking into. If we're willing to use emulators, there's things. Right, and you know, I have a mini PC that I need to get into that eventually. Mark says, Kick is funded by a large gambling online site. Kick doesn't have the backing of a trillion dollar company like Google. There you go. Have I ever had a conversation with Cat? No, we just sit around with our mouths taped shut and we go, It's real tough because sometimes I think that like she's going to make like tuna casserole and instead she gives you like a bowl of gummy worms because she thought that's what you asked for. A little confusing. Yeah. But it works. We've been married for five years so I guess that's uh, that's the best way to have a relationship. <clears throat> T 
seems like I'm enjoying Elden Ring more on my second run. I don't know if I would say that, Bob. Uh, I think it's fun. A fun game. I liked it on my first run. Um, I think the problem with my first run was when I reached the final third of the game, I realized everything was reused in Samey. Now that I know that, really the, the, the appeal to the game for me is seeing how all these cool magic spells that I'm now unlocking blast the living shit out of everything on the screen. Right? I don't care. I'm not looking for a unique boss encounter. I'm not looking for something new to discover. I'm just saying, okay, I have a bunch of obstacles in my way. How do I destroy those obstacles with maximum vengeance and just vaporize them from existence with these magic spells at my my disposal? So that's the cool thing. Like today, I fought the final giant worm, great worm. I forget its name. Uh, it has a weird name. But anyway, so the great worm, it's huge. And it hits you with tons of damage. So I, I, I walked up to it. And I just used this spell, Rain of Stars, and it just kept hitting the thing repeatedly. It was like, like hitting a million hits on the thing, and it couldn't hit me. Like, I kept doing it, and he tried to hit, and man, he could not hit me once because he was just, like, kind of getting jerked around, and he just tried to swing, and he would, like, miss and be stupidly dumb. I was like, wow, that was pretty cool. You know, I, and I keep getting new spells. Like, every stream now, I seem to be unlocking a new spell or ability that's great. I'm using the Giant Sword now that I got from the Magic Dragon. And the Giant Sword seems to stagger certain enemies that normally can't be staggered. So I'm just like, hit, 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 hit. And it's working. I'm like, wow, that's fun. That's different than, you know, what I was doing with the melee class. Jump R2 5,000 times. <clears throat> At the same time, some things are ridiculous. Like, I fought the boss of Castle Soul today. Forget his name. He's the dude that's the cop carbon copy of the boss that's in the middle of the uh, rot swamp in Kaled. I can't remember the guy's name. So I tried to fight him normally, and basically it was hard because he has the two minions that are with him, and then he has giant error effect attacks and giant damage. So the second attempt, I said, I'm just going to try to nuke him, and I did. I just I buff, chug, kamehameha, and literally it just kept going, and it's like kept hitting him. The other idiot walked into it. He died. The other idiot tripped into it. He died. I just kept going. Then, I, oh, it canceled one more time. Dead. Cool. Great fight. <laughs> and it's fun to see that. Because that doesn't work on every boss. It only works on certain bosses. But it seems like they, they, they put a lot of effort into making a variety of spells to keep the magic build interesting. You're not using the same spells the whole game, which is good. <clears throat> oh, let's see here. I got a dollar tip. Take a wild guess who this is from. I was correct. It's Kurt. Milk kick dry before it goes under. No. Don't feel sorry for Mark. The Australian government paid for his vacation. What? What? Oh, <laughs> uh, sure they did. Okay, I'm sure that you have intimate knowledge of that. I'm sure you I know all about that. What the hell, dude? Whatever you say, Kirk. Anyway, oh, uh, let's see here. Are you excited for the DLC? Of course I am. Yes, I'm very excited for the uh, Elden Ring DLC. I cannot wait for it. I hope that's great. I know it's going to be great, right? Players just tend to be food like bibimbap or kimchi stew are not Korean barbecue. They're normal Korean food. Korean barbecue is marinated in grilled meat. Correct. So the bibimbap has the marinated meat as part of the the uh, the, 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 the part of the dish. That's what I meant to say, the dish. But it has many other things in it that are, of course. I mean, they're not barbecuing the seaweed. They're not barbecuing the kimchi. That's just sides that you're basically getting. It's part of the bibimbap, yes. The place that we've been ordering from, they have various different platters. So they have the bulgogi, which is the beef. They have the spicy pork. Um, they have the bulgogi that's now it's in the in the egg. And I can't remember what that's called. It's like, it's like pancakes of egg and meat together. That's something different. So they have like three or four different kinds of the barbecue. But then they have the bibimbap, which is a variation dish that has some of the barbecue in it. Right. <clears throat> okay. No, there are very few Korean restaurants in my area. The ones that are considered real Korean barbecue are sit-down restaurants where you cook the food there. This is a place that has the Korean-style food as part of their menu, but also they do other things like Hawaiian-style and others. So it's kind of like a fusion restaurant, but does some of the Korean stuff. When was the last time I sat down at a restaurant? This last Thursday. My wife and I had a sushi dinner to celebrate our anniversary, and it was super-duper good. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, we are happy here in Washington. Uh, quite frankly, you know, there are some reasons why you would consider moving. For example, if the weather gets way worse or something, you know, right now, the weather is getting hotter every single goddamn year, which is very frustrating. Um, moved out here to be in moderate weather and then all of a sudden now it decides that like for two three months of the year it wants to be increasingly hot and we don't have central air nor can we afford it it's like what the hell um but outside of that you know it's fine out here definitely it's a nice it has a nice the good thing about out here is everything is within a, a very quick track meaning i can get any kind of food i want within reason i can't get true italian food but good variety of food all the shopping I need to do, medical care, you know, stuff for pets, you know, if I, you know, get into the great outdoors one day, that's available. You know, if I want to go to a major city, I can drive 45 minutes and be in Seattle. Like everything I need is within an hour. I, there's no travel really required. And there's way less people out here than where I came from on the East Coast. So there just feels like there's way more space to be lived in. And I like that. <clears throat> I'm well aware that there's other places in the country that may be more economical to do what I do for a living. Places that taxes are lower, prices are lower. The problem is there, the weather sucks shit. Like Florida, infamously, is a good place to have your own business because it's very cheap to operate out of Florida. But if you live in Florida, you have to live in insane humidity, terrible downpours, hurricanes, weather, disasters, all kinds of terrible shit all the fucking time. Who the fuck would want to live in Florida? Not me. <laughs> so that's the that's the the trade off there. You know what I'm saying? Like it seems like the reason those places try to make it attractive for someone like me who runs his own business to make lower taxes, lower prices, because their weather sucks. So the trade off is please come here. We know the weather's terrible, but we like more people, so we'll be nice to you in other ways, right? Uh, I received a dollar tip. Twenty days of paid leave, four weeks, annual leave or vacation called holiday pay in Australia. All employees, including full time and part time employees, are entitled to up to four weeks of paid annual leave, twenty days or five weeks. That's great. I don't care. Really, I don't. I don't care <laughs> at all. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why I should care. Uh. My stupid email deleted something erroneously that it wasn't supposed to fucking delete, so now I gotta find this goddamn email. It glitched. I clicked on one email and it deleted like 10. Stupid fucking thing. Here we go. There we are. Fixed it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my head itches. You think he wants me to move to Australia for the benefits he listed? No, I think he was saying because Mark lives in Australia and he was talking about going on a vacation. That's why Mark only spent $4,000 on the travel. Yeah. No, Slayer, this is what I'm trying to tell you. The Korean cuisine out here is incredibly limited. Um, We have a lot of other things, like Japanese of all styles, Chinese, Vietnamese, Filipino, um, Indian, Mediterranean, like all those are kind of very prominent out here. We, I, I have not really seen a Korean style restaurant. It's very rare. No, I've never heard of or played Seven Days to Die. I know what it is. Like I heard the name, but I don't even know what kind of a game it is. All right, so guys, we got about roughly a half an hour left on stream, just so everybody knows. Okay, about a half an hour left. So if anyone else has topics they want to talk about, uh, any other contributions are going to come in you want to shout out, now would be the time to do it. All right, before uh, time runs out, thank you for in advance to everyone who has. Well, uh, first of all, thank you to everyone who did contribute, and thanks to anyone who may contribute by the end of the stream. Jasper's fine. He's relaxing in the house somewhere right now. I have no idea where. 
So there's is the same the same for him in Indonesian food over there. Every you know every place has a cultural focus depending on what kind of people live there. Here, the reason that we have the cultures here that we have here is because if you are from Asia and you're coming to the United States, there's very few airports you would land at first. And our airport, SeaTac, is one of the main ones. If you're coming in from Asia, that's where you would land. A lot of people, when they were traveling to the United States, they just decided to stay around this area. So they came to the States and said, no, I'll stay around Seattle. And then they started opening different cultural restaurants and things. And that's why they, we have entire, you know, groups of, of cultural pockets. You know, a bunch of Vietnamese people live there. A bunch of Filipino people live here. That's how it is. They kind of settled together. Um, that's also why we basically have no Italian food. The Italian food here is not authentic at all because there's no real Italians out here. It's either chain stuff like Olive Garden or it's people who are attempting Italian food, but it's really an Americanized or twisted version. I went to an Italian restaurant when I first moved out here. They claimed they were authentic. The food was French. I'm serious. Like I went into the restaurant, tried this dish, and it was like French ingredients in in what was supposed to be Italian food. And I don't want to insult the chef, but I mean, I would tell him, you know what the fuck you're doing. None of this food is Italian at all. It's not even close. You know, it's hilarious. I was reading the menu. It's like, oh, every every five years, the chef takes a two week trip to Italy to learn Italian cuisine. As and I'm sitting there and I'm eating the food. I'm like, and and what did he learn? Where the fuck did he eat? in Italy because it wasn't at a fucking restaurant like this is shit it does not taste Italian at all so that's what it's like out here like there you know basically there's uh, nothing authentic like there's no real authentic diner style food out here there's no honestly there's almost no good burger joints it's more like chains like they have five guys there's fucking Red Robin there's no like authentic unique places like we used to have in Connecticut when I used to you know eat there um when it comes to that kind of stuff. It's just more, a lot of Asian stuff. A lot of Asian and some Mexican and stuff like that. So. <laughs> Side salad that is super suggested. What does Jasper think of the new squatters laws? Jasper doesn't think of the new squatters laws because he's a cat. He doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. But I do appreciate the super chat. Oh yeah, I don't I don't know of any Malay or Indonesian food out here, Slayer, at all. Like I don't know of anywhere to get it. I've never really seen it. No. Thank you, King Michael has complimented my shirt. Thank you, King. <laughs> Seems like you guys are running out of topics to talk about because it's definitely calming down and people are not really tagging me as much and there's not as much serious conversation. You know, man, it's like I said, when we have time on late streams, that's a regular opening and if people wanted to look into doing stuff on the mini PC such as emulation with Fightcade or other... I, I consider it. We haven't really had a significant opening in any schedule to do something like that yet, but I think we will soon. Uzbekistani food, what is that like? What do, what do they have in Uzbekistan? What's what Serbian food? No, I've never tried Serbian food either. I don't know what that would be like. Which fighting game franchise do I find the most overrated? Uh, Mortal Kombat. It's fine, but it's never played as competitively as other franchises, yet it sells better than other franchises because it's Mortal Kombat. Because it is the prominent fighting game in the United States because of the level of gore and silly hype behind it it gets insane sales and then just fizzles out. Like, that's literally what happened with Mortal Kombat 1. People, fucking people ran out and bought it in droves, played it for a couple weeks, got bored with it, never played it again, but its sales are higher than fucking Street Fighter 6, which is still the top competitive fighting game in the world right now. So what happened, right? Like, why? Because it's stupid hype. People are dumb. They buy crap because there's gore in it, not because it's good. It's stupid. 
<clears throat> nope, I've never had Russian food either. I wouldn't even know what that would be. That's cool. Mark says in, in Australia, they actually do have some Italian food because there is an, an Italian immigrant area. That's good to hear. As I've explained, uh, I never really got into Guilty Gear. I tried playing Guilty Gear when it was new. I had friends who were into it who were also into Capcom fighters, but they were playing Guilty Gear, so I tried it. It was never my cup of tea. It was always the more complicated game that was so complex with this level of inputs and the battle system was so complex with levels upon levels of stuff in it that it just would take so much intense practice and everything. And at the time, you know, I was heavily into the Versus series and, and classic Street Fighter. I just didn't really want to learn an entire new series like that. <clears throat> so I never got into it. But I know people who play it, you know, historically, they love it. They say it's a very high-level game, and I respect it. And I wa I've watched tournaments of it and enjoyed that, but I would probably never play it. Cracker Jacks, I'll see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Have a good night. <clears throat> Side Salad did a super chat says, I didn't mean to disparage Jasper. <laughs> you didn't. Have you seen the movie Barbarian? Yeah, I reviewed it last year. I reviewed Barbarian on my DSP Reacts channel last year. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's a creepy-ass movie. It's not what you think. The name doesn't even really fit. It's like a misnomer. You think it's going to be one thing, and then it's just crazy, fucking creepy, scary in another way. It was. I, I liked it. It kept me guessing, and it kept me wondering what the hell was going to happen. I don't think it's the best horror movie ever made, but I, I did enjoy it. <clears throat> Russian food has dumplings, cabbage rolls, proshkis, lots of skewers, braised rabbit and duck, and lots of salted herring. Woo. It sounds like a wide variety of stuff. <clears throat> Thank you, Han Solis. I'm out of town. Just want to wish you a happy weekend. You as well. Hope you're having a good time out of town. I've never seen The Witcher on Netflix. I had never had Netflix while The Witcher was running on it. But I do another playthrough of Stray. No, there's nothing else to do in the game. I did it all. But I would love a sequel. Have I watched Beekeeper? Never heard of it. No. Is this Jason State the movie? Never heard of it. But I think Dutch cheese is as good as Italian or French cheese. I wouldn't know. I've never had Dutch cheese. Did I play sports in high school? No. No. Okay. We're winding down. I thought, honestly, guys, I thought we would go later. But it seems like people are really running out of stuff to talk about at this point. So maybe we're going to adjourn soon. Unless conversation picks up. How about Quake 4, Metro, or Walking, or any of the re retro games? Ooh. I don't know what you mean, Brian. What are you talking about? Did my new controller arrive? Yes, it did. It's still charging. There it is. Galactic purple, although it looks blue on camera, it's galactic purple and it looks purple in person. <clears throat> the blimp says video shops, CDs, indoor smoking, all things that used to be around 25 years ago that no longer are. What do you think is around today that will not be around in 25 years? Uh, you know, I I feel I've said this before. I feel like physical stores, um, outside of maybe food, perishable items, I feel like physical stores, like retail stores, are just on the way out. I don't think there's really a a, a real justifiable reason for their existence outside of seeing a product in person, right? Like, I, if I want to go and, like, okay, I'm out to look for, um, geez. Well, I'm trying to think of something you'd want to see and physically compare, right? Like, okay, maybe you want to go out and buy a laptop. You want to actually physically see and compare what they look like form factor-wise, what the keyboard looks like, features. You would want to go see that somewhere before you just drop a bunch of money on an expensive laptop if you don't actually know what it's going to look or, or, or feel like, right, in utility. So... So, 
maybe the, you know you go to the place and instead of it being a brick and mortar retail store where you go buy the laptop, it's a showroom. You go to the showroom and you pay five dollars to get in, and all you do is walk around and look and test products. And then if you want to buy it, you literally can take out your phone, scan the code, it auto pays from your account and auto ships right to your house and you get it within two days, right? No more buying things physically and taking them home with you. Just bloop, bloop, bloop. And you walk home and it's there in two days, it gets delivered. Like I said, the only thing that I would want immediately every time would be food. Because food I'm bringing home, it needs to be refrigerated immediately. And a lot of the times I want to eat it right away. It's perishable, right? So you can't have a lead time there. But everything else, most people order shit online anyway, right? <clears throat> Again, I really don't see a, a much of a future for the brick and mortar places. I think they're on the way out. I really do. Um, in 25 years, I think things in that regard may be very different. Very different. But outside of that, I really don't know. Oh, let's see here. Dabian says, I want to see clothes in person to see if they fit instead of ordering online and hoping. Agree with you there? Completely, 100%. But how many people, for example, order online if it doesn't fit? There's an insanely easy way to return clothes. Like, right now, literally anything that I buy online, I can just go to my local Kohl's store and return if it's Amazon, you just walk right in. Here it is. Bloop, bloop, done. Get my full money back. Within a few minutes, you get your money back. So it's not like, oh, I ordered, didn't fit. Now it's a giant fucking hassle for me. It's all easy to do now. So if the ease of use continues like that, then I don't think people are really going to care that much. But with particular, with clothes, like this shirt, if I saw this online, I'd have no idea if I would like it. But seeing this shirt in person at the store, picking it up, feeling the fabric to see what it's like, uh, you know what? I like that shirt. Now I want to get it, right? And then you buy it that right then and there, and then guess what? I can wear it within a day or two, then I have to order it and wait for it to get shipped to my house. That's definitely kind of something, you know, appealing, I would say. Do I miss the Sears catalog? I mean, I miss the Sears wish book, which used to be around Christmas time when you can look through their entire stock of things that they had at the stores and you could check off the things you want <clears throat> in the hopes that someone would go there and buy them for you and give them to you as Christmas gifts. But yeah, that was nice. But I never used the Sears catalog as a catalog. I used it as like a way to mark, oh, I like this toy. I like this video game, stuff like that. Uh, side salad, no. Again, I don't even know what you're talking about. This is the second time someone's mentioned Stuttering John here tonight. Uh, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> At all. I, I don't care. I'm sure it was negative, so I don't care. If it was positive, or at least neutral, maybe I would care. But anywhere they feature me, it's usually negative, so I don't care. Do I miss malls? I don't miss them. Um, they still exist out here, but they're definitely like a, a pale shade of what they used to be. Like even my local mall, which is supposed to be like one of the bi biggest, most ritzy malls in this area, has like tons of empty stores that all moved out since the COVID times, you know, and haven't really got uh anything consistently back in there for a while. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, let's see. Yako Mighty just got fifth place at a local Street Fighter tournament. Any tip on winning locals? No. I don't know what to tell you because, you know, for me, like, the biggest thing is just, just don't get nervous. Don't realize that in any given day, anyone could win in a tournament and just play a solid game, you know, and try to learn. If you lose, try to figure out what it is that you did wrong or could have done to improve, right? But that's about it. <clears throat> Okay, this is hilarious. No, no, no. I got to read this. Listen to this. This guy's name is Ung Goy Smacker 447 Just post. I swear to God, this is word for word what he posted in the chat. I think you dodged a bullet by not going on the Lolcow Pod Item Class One Hand Maces Rarity Rare Damnation Crusher Synthesized Flanged Maced 1H. 
Whoa. Someone accidentally copy pasted something. They didn't mean to copy paste there, I think. What the hell? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but, but, but for the record, no, I did not dodge a bullet. When you someone says the phrase, I dodged a bullet, essentially what that means is you were in the line of fire of something that could have been bad for you, and you sidestepped it. You dodged, you got out of the way, so it didn't happen to you. I was never in any realm of any universe, in any multiverse, in any possibility. There was no way I was going to be on the Lal Cow podcast. You understand that? Never. It was never even discussed. No offer was made. Not a single conversation was had about it. This was Keemstar 100% making this fucking idea up in his mind. Somehow convincing himself that he just had the power to make the show despite the fact that he didn't speak with anyone to even agree about it, and even talked publicly like that about it. And then when I basically you know, was not going to do it, because the guy was a completely egotistical, narcissistic weirdo, right? He then went on a fucking giant sissy tirade screaming about how he can't get his way with me, and oh, I'm going to destroy this guy, I'm going to make Netflix documentaries on him, I'm going to contact his family and friends. For what? Because I don't want to be on your shitty show. I don't like you because you're a scumbag? I mean, what the hell? Like, you, this guy's crazy, right? I never had any intention of doing business with this man at all. So I did not dodge a bullet. Dodging a bullet would have been, I actually was in talks to work with this guy, and then I decided to not do it. That literally never happened. It never even got to that level. So there was no bullet dodging there. That's definitely a false statement. <clears throat> Oh, let's see here. I received a $20 tip. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, someone says, enjoyed the conversation. Tell Kat we understand and we will see her next week. Sounds good. Whoever that is, I don't know who it is. Anonymous. An anonymous $20 tip. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Biggest contribution of the night, actually. So thank you very much for that, Anonymous. So, for the final few minutes of this show, I will be wearing gunner glasses. <laughs> yes, I saw that you had accidentally, accidentally passed it that from Path of Exile. I already read that out. I guess you missed it. Okay. Do I miss the chill, the chill fishing streams? I mean, to some extent, but I mean, we still do chill streams. Like, tonight's a perfect example that we don't even need a game. We could just hang out and have fun. We've been doing these about once a month, and they work, right? Um, the chill streaming game essentially just facilitates us to have this conversation while I'm fishing. So you don't need the fishing game, but it's nice to have it. Uh, maybe it would be nice to bring back another one sometime. Maybe this summer we'll see if there's any fishing games out around then, right? <clears throat> You know, I don't know if these gunner glasses work for this, because take a look. Now you have the reflection of the ring light, and you have the reflection of my blue screen in there, and then it's reflecting twice. It's reflecting, like, back, and it's two different... It's, like, very distracting. Does this bother you guys? This would bother the shit out of me if you were watching the show and I had these glasses on. You had these things in your face, right? Like, I don't mind wearing them, but if this bothers you, I'll take them back off. That looks terrible. <laughs> Oh, well, let's see here. I received a dollar tip. Oh, well, let's see. Some random to the dollar and says, sometimes you got to put your family first and the 50K would have helped you and your family. Completely false. Because even if I made 50K doing the show, all right, 
I would have been roped into doing an awful toxic show that would have been something I don't stand for, content I don't want to make, content that would have definitely been offensive to my viewers, right? And hurt my business overall, I feel, because it would have been a, brought a big toxic atmosphere to my content and my streams that I don't want on this channel, right? <clears throat> and I would have been roped into doing this awful thing that I just hate. Sorry, but that's it's better for me to stay the course of things that I know I, I stand for and I'm true to, to me and myself, that I, it's morally right, than doing things that I know are morally wrong just for profits. And I think that's the big difference between me and many, many other people out there that make content is that I absolutely refuse to make content that I think is morally wrong for, for profits. And my wife stands by me in that decision. That was That was a group decision that we made you know, when Keemstar supposedly wanted to contact me about this show, all right, I did have a conversation with her about it. I said, I have no idea if this is real or not. This is what people are telling me is being said on Twitter. You know, what do you think? And we we talked it out and we collectively agreed this is something we want absolutely nothing to do with. We prefer to be where we are, continue on how we're going, than the possibility of getting some kind of a payday out of it that would then hurt everything long term and basically be completely immoral to begin with. So... Yeah, there you go. Plus, to be completely honest, I don't trust Keemstar whatsoever at all. I don't think that he would have been legit to work with in any business capacity whatsoever. I think that I would have gotten screwed over in one way or another. So. Okay, so any more final thoughts? Any final topics, guys, before we adjourn? Uh, because, it, you know, speak now. Because we're going to adjourn in about 10 minutes or so, roughly. So let's see if people have anything final things that they want to talk about. And then we uh, prepare for tomorrow's React Day. Oh, uh, no, Dab Hands, I don't know any tips for the Like a Dragon post-game dungeons. I don't know what you're talking about. If you mean Infinite Wealth, I never did it. If you mean the standard game, I never beat it. <laughs> Side Salad with another super chat. Are there any of your peers in the YouTube community that you would consider a collab with? I don't have any peers in the YouTube community. I stand alone. I know that now for a fact. I know that sadly, the greater YouTube community is literally either number one out for drama and therefore would just use anything I'm involved with to get themselves cheap views and a boost and just use it at my expense. Or they want nothing to do with me whatsoever because they're not like that. And they're afraid that to get involved with me is going to create such drama for their own communities because of my stalkerish hater community follows me around that it's not worth the, the risk. So, you know, there have been relationships I have had over the years with other streamers. And basically, I've literally been told to my face, I like you as a person and as a, per as a content creator, you're cool. But the hater community is just too much for me and I can't have this affect my business so I can't associate with you anymore. I've been told that twice in my 16 year run from people who I genuinely had a good relationship with. And I was like, totally 100% understand, take no offense whatsoever that you're saying that, good luck with your life. So there you go. <clears throat> Anything else? Everyone's quiet now. Like, literally, the chat is almost silent. Right? No one's really bringing up any new topics. Nothing. So, I guess we're done. Unless you got, you know... I'm here to chill, but if you guys are done, then we're done. I'm not going to stay or overstay my welcome if people are bored. It seems like whenever we do these Q&A slash chill streams, they only last about two hours, and then they do, you know, then people get tired of them. Two hours seems like the sweet spot.
<laughs> Everyone seems to say, yes, we ran out of questions. <laughs> All right. All right, I guess we'll adjourn then. I think we're done. And Sayo says, I think we're done. All right. Hey, it was a good one. It was a relaxing one. We had a lot of different variety of topics that were discussed. And I'm sure people will watch and enjoy the vids after the fact. If you do, leave comments on some of these topics. Uh, you know, we'll have a little uh, discussion in the in the comments. Um, <clears throat> there you go. And uh, thank you all for the support. Hanging out with me tonight, impromptu. I know it works. Again, we can't do this all the time. But if I do like once a month, it seems to work nicely, right? It's enough split between them that it feels fresh and interesting. So there you have it. All right. So everyone, thank you. Everyone watching on demand, thank you. Thanks for a chill night. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks to those who supported. Thanks to those who hung out. And uh, probably see you at some point in May for kind of a similar stream. All right. Thanks a lot.